Okay, we gotta talk about protein because I feel like there are a lot of myths out there around protein and how they affect weight loss. And there's a lot of different types of protein. So what I wanna do on this video is I really wanna walk through with you what pr the purpose of protein is what, through the lens of weight loss because there's a lot of purposes, but I wanna talk about it through the lens of weight loss. I also wanna talk about a lot of the urban myths that are out there about protein and what you need to know so you can think this through for yourself. So here we go, this one's dense. I love talking about protein. If you ever sit at a meal with me, you would know I like love talking about protein because there's so much nuance that we need to know. So let's dive in, let me go through it. Okay, I wanna start off with like three things that people believe about protein that we just need to break apart, okay? So the first thing that people think when they think of protein is that all protein is created equal. That's not the case. Now, I wanna categorize this into animal protein and plant-based. Let's just go animal-based, plant-based. There are pros and cons of both. So again, if you're new to my channel, welcome. But I also want you to know, I am here to help you think this through for yourself. So if you're over here in the plant-based protein part, amazing. Let me give you some nuance on how to make that incredible for you. If you're over here on animal-based, amazing. Let me give you some ideas on how to think this through. So when we look at all proteins being equal, they're not because all protein sources don't have the same amino acid uh, content in them. And I'm gonna talk in a moment about, about why amino acids are so important for your hormones, for your neurotransmitters, for mental health, for weight loss. Amino acids is like this forgotten uh, nutrient that we are not highlighting enough. So when we look at plant-based proteins, a lot of them are missing a full spectrum of amino acids, which means that you might need to supplement in some amino acids so that you can have the proper amount of amino acids to be able to make hormones and build muscle and keep your neurotransmitters really nicely balanced. So in fact, I don't really know a plant-based protein that has all of the amino acids in them. So just be aware of that if you are doing a plant-based diet. The animal-based proteins, even those, even though they're more rich in an amino acid structure, they still don't have all the amino acids that you need. Now there's a couple standouts when it comes to animal-based that I really love. The egg is one of them. The egg has such a big, vast, amount of nutrients that it can help you build your cartilage to build help with skin can help with your metabolism i mean there's help with your brain there's so many things that are wonderful in an egg because of its amino acid structure we also know things like grass-fed meat when you're dealing with a, an animal-based grass-fed cow Basically, when you're getting that animal, you're getting the complete amino acids, plus if it's grass-fed, you're getting omega-3, 6, 9s, which is really nourishing to your cells. So in some sense, animal meat has more is, is more towards that complete amino acid profile, but that doesn't mean you can't be a vegan and still get what you need out of your protein. You just have to be aware you might need to supplement it. Okay, that's how I, that's debunking myth number one. That was dense. Okay, number two, vegetable protein is healthier than animal protein. Okay, I, I know, like I feel literally like I just stepped into quick stand with that comment. But please, I want you to think beyond you, 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 what you may have been taught. I want you to think for yourself and make smart decisions around your health for yourself. The problem we have with plant-based proteins is that many of them will spike your blood sugar. And so they will put you on these highs and lows of blood sugar. That's not great for metabolic health. So if you are gonna go with a plant-based diet, please make sure that every single meal you are eating is paired with a good fat. 
really, really important. It will stop those spikes from going up and down. Okay. Then we also talked about how you have to bring in more fat so you can stabilize your blood sugar. That's how you make plant-based proteins even metabolically healthier for you. Okay. In animal-based protein, we have the, the, the third cha challenge or the third myth that I want to bring to your attention is that there is a rhetoric that animal meat is bad for your health. I think we need to stop going with these blanket statements and we have to get into the nuance. Animal meat, when it is raised in a conventional way where it is pumped with hormones and antibiotics is never good for your health. This is absolutely true. But when it's been wild, when it's been fed grass, when it has been treated in a humane way, now we're dealing with a protein that has all the amino acids and all the right balance of omega-3, 6, and 9. And that is a completely different health lens to look at animal meat than an animal that's been pumped full of toxins. So to start off this video, we, I, I have to tell you that protein in these two camps need to be talked about differently. Okay, now with that, let's talk about extra protein making you fat or not. So let's talk about that for a moment. There are two ways to build muscle. One is by strength training. Two is by eating protein. Muscle is our organ of longevity. Muscle will help you lose weight. We need muscle. We got to do everything on the planet to fight for our muscle. I can tell you as a 54-year-old woman, I am working out more, eating more protein, lifting heavier weights because I'm at that age. I got to fight for it. And if I don't fight for it now, I'm going to have to suffer the consequences of a body that doesn't have enough muscle in it years to come from now. So with that in mind, when we go to look at protein, it's not just a, a conversation of animal versus um, or vegetarian, vegan versus animal. It's, it's an amount issue. We need to make sure you are getting enough protein, whatever camp you sit in. And the amount of protein that you need, and this is in American terms, I, I'll have my team put in the notes to translate it to kilograms for you. But every pound of body weight that you want to be, you should have a gram of protein for every pound of body weight. So I'm going to use myself as an example. You see me sit down, you might not know that I'm 5'6", and I weigh 130 pounds. I've weighed 130 pounds for the last several decades. That's my weight. And so at 130 pounds, I need to get 130 grams of protein into my diet every single day. Now here's the trick, and this is the weight loss trick. You can't get it in all in one meal. What research shows is that protein, in order for it to build muscle, not turn to fat, and to speed up um, your, getting you your weight loss results, is best if we divvy it up into 30 gram chunks. When you eat 30 grams of protein, you trigger an amino acid receptor site in your muscle that stimulates a cellular process called mTOR. mTOR is growth. So when you trigger that amino acid receptor site with 30 grams of protein, all of a sudden the muscle goes into a building phase. Now, if you really want to build muscle, you go and you, you do a strength training workout, and then you come home and you make sure that you have one meal that's 30 grams of protein so that you can, what you did in the gym is you broke down muscle, the body's going to go in and repair it stronger, and then you came in with the right nutrition, and now it's going to build it even stronger. So you're stacking two really cool principles together. So we want to make sure that we divvy this up, your total amount of protein that you need in a day is based off your weight that you want to be. That amount needs to hit these 30 grams, at least 30 grams of protein per meal. The next part of this that I want you to gather is that 
you're best doing it every two to three hours. That's what the research shows. Okay, check this out. I have a free fasting guide for you all. It's free and it's gonna teach you all the basics of fasting. It's gonna teach you how to kill hunger when you fast, which is really cool. And it's gonna show you how to break your fast among many other things. All you gotta do is click on this link right here and enjoy. Now, a lot of you might say, well, especially if the men listening, you might say, well, gosh, I was gonna do, I need to get 170 grams in and I need to get 30 grams in and I'm fasting. So my eating window is really small. How am I gonna take 170 grams of protein and divvy it up over two to three hours? So this is where the nuance comes in and follow me here. I want you to, to, to grasp this. You will continually benefit yourself with protein to build muscle if your per meal gram amount stays between 30 grams and 90 grams. After 90 grams of protein, you tip in to a little too much glucose coming from that protein and too much glucose will be stored as fat. So if we want to use protein to lose weight, we've got to stay within 30 and 90 grams of protein at one sitting. And then we want to do that over a couple, every two to three hours. Let's say you're going to give yourself 30 grams at the first meal. Maybe it's 40 grams at the next meal. Maybe it's 50 grams at the next. However, you're going to divvy it in. But just don't tip over that 90 grams. Now, here's what's really fun. If you're like, whoa, what just happened? That's more on protein than I ever thought I needed to know. Hopefully that's what just happened because I'm, I can't tell you how many people like in our Reset Academy are losing weight and, and, and gaining muscle by little principles like this. Super important. But here's what I want you to know because I know you're going to ask this. Well, how do I know how, much, how many grams of protein are in my steak or my eggs or my poultry? Ready? I figured it out for you. Ready? Four to five ounces of meat, a one large chicken breast or fish filet or a medium sized steak or pork chop is about 30 grams of protein. So 30 grams of protein, that would be one meal, is a large chicken breast or a large piece of fish or a medium sized steak or pork chop. If you were like, well, I don't know what large and medium is, Four ounces of meat, which again is 30 grams of protein, is about the size of a deck of cards. There you go. Super easy. Eggs, those of you that love eggs like me, five to six eggs you need to get 30 grams of protein. Those of you who love dairy, one and a half cups of low-fat cottage cheese or Greek yogurt will get you 30 grams of protein. There you go. I did it for you. So that's, that's the skinny on protein. Let's make sure we have the conversation we talk about protein, the difference between animal, plant and animal. Let's look at your body weight that you want to be and divvy up it throughout your day. So you're, you're pulsing in, you're dosing in protein. And then if you're really serious about losing weight, go and work out in a fasted state and then come home and power up on protein. And there's the magic formula on protein. So let me know. Have you followed this? Put it in, put it in the comments. Let me know if this has really helped you. Um, and as always, I'm cheering you on. Okay, you trying to maximize your weight loss? Apple cider vinegar may be the key. Go check out this video where I show you exactly when, how, and why you wanna use it for weight loss. Apple cider vinegar changes your microbiome of your gut. This good bacteria is gonna help to bring your blood sugar down and make it so that you can switch over into the fat burning state